11 minutes after the hour of 10, you're still tuned in to Flu 94.9 FM. We'll be having a conversation with Johnson Chuku, who will be joining us via phone this morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, we understand that you're part of the Abia League of Professionals and that uh, recently uh, this group of persons have made donations towards the COVID Project Abia. Uh, we want you to, uh, f uh, first and foremost, tell us the idea behind the Abia League of Professionals. Uh, you start by introducing yourself and your portfolio, if you have any, and tell us about the Abia League of Professionals. Okay, thank you uh, once again for having uh, for having me. Uh, my name is Johnson Chuku. Uh, I'm from UKK in Abia, in the government of Abia State. I am the managing director of Kauri Asset Management Limited. Um, Come again. I am also the, I'm, uh, the managing director of Carrier Asset Management Limited. Okay. I'm also the chairman of the implementation committee of the Abia Professional League. Okay. Uh, the concept of Abia Professional League was actually originated by um, Paris Tamis Ngozi Koma, who in her quiet moment thought through the challenges of how we can manage the uh, coronavirus case in Africa. Abia State should you come to the state. At that time, there was no reported case. There was no index case in Abia State. And she approached a number of women in Adians, and she shared her thoughts and vision on how, what, how we can come together to set up an isolation uh, center and uh, an isolation and treatment center in Abia State to support government and support the people of Abia State to ensure that we can handle cases of uh, the sick and handle cases of coronavirus in case cases, in such cases uh, eventually occur. Okay. And uh, we all came together as, as we speak this morning. We have 224 white women uh, Abians on the platform that have joined our volunteers to support the construction and the equipment of an isolation and treatment center in, in Abia State. So, as we speak also, we have almost completed an isolation and treatment center located at Federal Medical Center of Mahia. We are currently making a host to equip it. Uh, we are still uh, getting, and this, we are, we are all done from donations by women in Adians, and in some instances, non Adians, who felt that uh, we need, they need to support the people of the people of state to ensure that we minimize to the fairest minimum cases or manage successfully should there arise cases of corona. Please. All right, so the idea of forming the Abia League of Professionals is to um, start the COVID project, Abia. Yes, it's to um, support the state in managing uh, the pandemic. Uh, so what we now did is that we came up with the decision that we need to build a permanent isolation center. Okay. The permanent isolation center will serve the purpose of uh, COVID-19 but we want it permanent so that it can also serve future medical purposes in the state. So there's not a temporary infrastructure that will uh, be dismantled at the end of this pandemic. Uh, so that's why we went out to say, okay, let's set up an isolation uh, and treatment center. And for us, to, before we eventually uh, settled on where to do that, we went through the state. Uh, we looked at all the facilities in the state, and we looked at where we could ha set up an isolation center that we don't need to be physically there. Some of us are not in Abia, some are in Abia, some are in Lagos, some are in Abuja, some are, many of our members are actually outside this country. And uh, we, 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 we went to uh, Amatara um, Hospital uh, and then looked at the facility there. We went to Infectious Disease Center somewhere in Abia, checked at the facility there. We checked um, Abia State Teaching Hospital and then we also checked uh, the Federal Medical Center in Maya. And uh, based on the criteria we set out to determine the location, it, it fell on the uh, on uh, Abia, uh, on FMC to host the exhibition and uh, treatment center. Principally because we already have a large pool of professional, competent management and, uh, and uh, other supporting facilities that can manage such very uh, uh, infectious uh, disease. So that's why we settled for FMC. Oh my. Okay, so uh, what you're putting in FMC is not a structure, but the content of the structure. Is that what you're saying? 
No, we are building a state. We have completed the building. We have completed an isolation ward, a 50 bed isolation uh, ward. Okay. And, and treatment center. We have actually completed it. We've, the construction has been on for the past six weeks. And I'm happy to say that look, within a period of six weeks, we completed an isolation center, uh, an isolation ward, fully uh, dealt with all the basic uh, features of uh, an isolation ward. Okay, so in lay terms, this is a structure with equipment insert. Well, we, we have completed a structure. What we are now looking at is a is a it. Uh, we've actually ordered for beds. It's a 50 bed, like I mentioned earlier. Okay. 25, uh, 25 female ward and 25 uh, bed uh, male ward. And um, we are currently uh, seeking for support from other women in Abiyans to equip it. We have raised enough money to compare for the payment of the construction, the building. We have also raised some money for part of the equipment, but we want to equip with a world-class medical facility so that anybody that comes there and whatever man can do will be done to save the person's life and to restore the person's health. Whatever is left will be left between God and the individual. But we felt that as we meaning Indians, we need to come out to support our people, to help our people, to manage, to navigate through this uh, global health crisis. And uh, we are not just, we have not just used the fiscal infrastructure, the building, we are equipping it. And we are still looking forward to other women like Nigerians to uh, support this novel initiative. All right, Johnson Chuku, Abia League of Professionals, the COVID project Abia. Um, can you tell me how the funds are being raised? You know, um, you said you've, you have enough funds to um, get med some medical equipment, but you want a world-class medical equipment. You said you finished the construction of the building. How were you able to achieve this? Okay, interestingly, like I said, we are 228 member, uh, voluntary members okay. of uh, the association. And like as I speak, you can also volunteer to join us. And so you're, you're, open to, you're open to membership? Yeah, we're open to anybody of uh, anywhere meaning Abiyan, even non abian alike, that... Uh, believe in giving back to the society, that believe that uh, collectively we cannot make a difference. When you started your program, I was listening to your one of your bylines, and your, one of your bylines is that collectively we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. And that's what we share as, as a body, as a group of Abians, and we feel, we feel that anybody who means well for the state, who wants to sacrifice whatever part of what God has given him or her to support our people can join us. Uh, as we speak, of the 224 me uh, members in the association of the association, uh, eight, eight members have contributed. As of this morning, we have raised we've raised 57.82 million naira. We've also raised contributed by Abians in diaspora, uh, those in, that live outside the country. We've also raised 8,040 dollars, and those are physical cash that we raised. We don't believe in pledges. We ask people that if you want to contribute, we want to see the contribution, and we advise you of our account. Once you indicate you are interested in what we're doing, we add you to the group, and then we'll also avail you of what information we have. Okay. So but back to your back to the uh, other aspect of your, your train of thought, yeah. Yeah, basically, um, the whatever we've done, we are based on voluntary contribution. Like I said, we have raised sixty seven point eight two million as as we speak this this morning and eight thousand and forty dollars. People have contributed, some have donated as high as ten million naira, some donated as high as, as, as fifty thousand naira. We are open to any donation. There's a saying in my village that the person who says my thing is too small is supposed to be so it, a, a person who is stingy. So our approach is this no matter how little you have, if you believe that we should make a change in other states, if you believe that you need to uh, support uh, uh, the state and the people of the state, you are free to join us. And no matter how little or how much you have, we will welcome it and we will appreciate it. Okay, so um, your achievement so far, you've said uh, the construction is done and um, you, know, you have some equipment on the way. At, at, if you had to put that into percentage, how many percent would you say you've achieved so far, considering the big picture? 
What I would say is that uh, we've achieved 80% of our target. We finished the fiscal infrastructure, like uh, the fiscal building. We placed others for the bed. We have enough money to pay for part of the equipment. But as you know, managing a uh, uh, coronavirus is a very complex uh, issue. You have to deal with the protocols uh, that involve safety uh, of the medical practitioners and uh, as well as to minimize infection of medical team as well as infection of other caregivers. So, um, you, some instances you need uh, uh, um, uh, um, some basic medical uh, equipment, um, some are such as ventilators. We've not uh, gotten a ventilator. We hope that we could get one or two other ventilators and pray that none of the patients that will come there will actually uh, need to go to a ventilator. But we have to put that in place in case anybody needs that. So we need to provide some of the basic infrastructure that support an isolation and treatment center. All right. So while preparing for, you know, the rain, um, which has to do with uh, eventualities as to uh, a burst in the number of confirmed cases, there is uh, a release by the NCDC that Ayavia State has five new cases as of yesterday. Okay. But the good news is out of a total number of 15 cases, seven um, have been discharged, managed and discharged. One, question one, what do you think about, you know, the increase in the number of confirmed cases in, in Abbey State, especially considering the fact that some people are still ignorant of uh, the existence of coronavirus uh, with the mindset that it is all a scam? Well, what I would say, I would start by, well, thank you, your station, Blue FM 94.9, uh, uh, for the awareness you're also creating as it relates to uh, managing COVID-19 you know, or the reality of COVID-19. Uh, one of the things that is missing is that we need to intensify the awareness creation process. As we speak, we are now at the phase, what we call uh, community uh, infection, where uh, people infect their family members, infect their friends, infect their colleagues in the offices, in their neighborhood. Because the um, coronavirus um, this is highly, highly contagious. Uh, it's something that uh, if you understand some of the protocols, if you touch a surface that has been touched by somebody who is infected uh, or from any of the uh, excrete, uh, maybe uh, natural excrete or or saliva from a, an infected person and you, ha you happen to enter your nose or your, your ear, you get infected. So it is highly contagious. And once you, you get to the point of community infection, it becomes, the growth can become exponential. And, and that's why I'm not surprised when I hear the five cases in Nigeria. We should actually still be thanking God that we only have had 15 cases. I mean, I live in Lagos State, and uh, in Lagos we talk of hundreds of cases on a daily basis. And if you look at what happened in Kano or what happened in Katsina, so we, 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 we of Abia original that live in Abia must be grateful to God that we have minimal cases, so just 15 cases, uh, and saving has been successfully managed. We are hoping that the remaining eight will also be successfully managed. And we are praying that we don't have other cases. But like you rightly pointed out, you need to build ahead of the rain before the rain sets in. I hope that the rain does not even come. We are building hoping that the rain does not come. But if it does come, we would be prepared to manage it. And that's why we are still appealing to Abians of uh, all walks of life, people who mean well for the state, people who love human beings, uh, the mankind and, and their fellow human beings, to support this noble in initiative. Uh, many of us who are building there don't even live in Asia State. Some of our diaspora brothers and sisters live in America, in Canada. This morning I got a, a message from somebody who said she's in Australia, and she w was asking how she can contribute. And uh, you don't know how often they come, but they all have interests of a state at heart. And that's what I'm urging those who even at home to share the same passion about our state so that we cannot make a difference. All right. Question number two. Um, can you please um, assess government's performance in handling the pandemic? Well, what I would say as uh, it relates to government performance, it's a, a very, uh, uh, it's a crisis that happened uh, suddenly on, on, on all the governments, particularly in Africa. Uh, even in, in the advanced countries, look at the country like adv as advanced as Italy. You saw the number of deaths in Italy, you've seen what has happened in Spain, you have seen what has happened in the US. You guys have one of the most advanced medical facilities globally. And um, so it's, it's, it's beyond the point of assessing what a government has done and what a government has done. 
virtually every government was running behind the, this uh, crisis. So uh, I think the key thing for me is that what can I contribute as an individual? And what can you contribute as an individual? Um, we, whatever efforts we make, we complement whatever effort the government is doing. It is beyond anybody sitting on your pants and hoping that the government will stop it. We've seen the most sophisticated government in the world running behind this pandemic. Britain is still running behind it. U.S. is running behind it. Today, Russia is recorded one of the highest rates of infection. Brazil is actually in a crisis. So it's not a matter of government, what the government has done or what the government has not done. It is what you and I can do, and that's what will make all the difference. All right. Thank you very much for your point of view shared with us today. Uh, we're hoping that, uh, you know, you can realize more funds in order to ensure that uh, the big picture is actually completed in record time. With the numbers of, uh, um, you know, confirmed cases increasing, uh, would you have any final words for Abiant this morning, considering the fact that you live in Lagos, and Lagos at this point is the epicenter of COVID-19 in Abiant State? Well, well, let me start by thanking uh, all the people who have contributed. Like I said, eight, eight people, including husbands and my wives, have contributed to this uh, project so far. Some even come back and contribute more because they feel excited uh, and they uh, feel um, that they should give back to the society. And uh, let me also thank my uh, committee members, apart from thanking those who have all contributed, all the members, all the 224 members of the uh, association or the league. Uh, I want to specifically thank the uh, project initiator, uh, Pakistan Gozi Kama. I also want to take, um, congratulate, thank my colleagues, uh, Dr. Anne Njoko uh, Kurafo, Mr. Tizo Oza Kalo, Etigwe Wa Ethigen, Fidel Ibabuchi, and Dr. Dr. Ngozi Azodo, and Mrs. Mary Koku. All these people have been working day and night, or toiling day and night, to ensure that this project is brought to the level you have gotten. I also want to congratulate and thank the architects, architects that pay, who work day and night to deliver a world-class isolation center within a period of uh, 46 days. Then I want to, uh, uh, to Abian, I want to occur to Abian that in the first place we must uh, keep safe and keep well. We must observe all the protocols that we need to take uh, to observe to avoid infection. Uh, and those who are showing signs of such infection, they should reach out to NCDC so that they could be tested and possibly isolated. But again, I also want to, have, uh, to appeal to all well being ideas and non ideas alike that you need to answer the call of your state. I have answered the call at the national level. I was, I mean, a part of the uh, uh, coalition of uh, against COVID at the national level. I'm also uh, chairing the implementation committee of the state uh, uh, My approach is this. In, if your country or your state is in a state of war, you cannot sit back and hope that you will remain safe. Let us all come out to support this project. It is in the interest of the state, it is in the interest that our brothers and, and uh, our sisters at home are safe and healthy. Otherwise, we will not say we have words or we have health when our folks are in difficulty. Uh, on that note, I thank you all. And I thank your station for giving me this opportunity to speak to the audience. Uh, and I hope that uh, at next uh, this will ginger many of those who have been burdened, uh, 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 have been burdened their mind to support this project and they, they are now free, to, uh, they should feel free to come on board. All right, thank you very much, Johnson Chuku. Please stay safe and continue the good work. Thank you.